Welcome back, friends. Here we are once again with the Some Low Grade Gamers podcast. Here for your weekly discussion about video games. Would you look at that? We are here like clockwork every week. As usual, it is just the three of us. I am Tom from Some Low Grade Gamers. Yes, also from some kind of gaming. Got a bit confused there. Um, it is a bit confusing. They're quite similar names. Yeah, they are similar similar names. Yes. Yeah. So I, I'm from some kind of gaming, as well as this podcast, obviously. Uh, I'm joined by the other half of said some kind of gaming. Laura. That's that's you. It's me. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Thank you for asking. I appreciate no it. Worries. Yeah. Every yeah. week. Yeah. Well, you know, it's only fair. I ask you every week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And of course. The most beautiful member of the trio over here, Mr. Dan, the low-grade gamer. How are you, sir? Not bad. How are you both going today? Not bad. Cannot complain. Just had a lovely discussion about dinosaurs, did some streaming. Mm -hmm. Died a lot. Yeah, it's been good. It's been good. How's your week, Dan? Anything new? Uh, I've been... Testing the mods in Elder Scrolls. That's Ooh. basically uh, the extent of what I have been doing because they allow mods on the console version. So that's pretty cool. Oh, that's nice. That that's sounds fun. Like, yeah, I mean, they've got to find a way of keeping that game fresh after like like 12 years or however long it's been out for. There are Something so ridiculous many add-ons like that. and there's an unofficial yeah. patch uh, or yeah, mod patch, unofficial. But it literally makes the game look 10 times better. And Ooh. the dragons look, the dragons are a significant part of the game. And they all sort of looked the same before. Now they've got really stark colors to them that makes sense as a dragon. So it's not like they're flying around as pink. Dragons. I don't know that that would be an abnormal dragon in my head. Uh, yeah, they're relatively dragony colours. I think pretty abnormal, anyway. So do, yes. do whatever you want with the dragon. What colour would you make your dragon? Probably red and black. Yeah, red and black is a good one. I like kind of like black, but it would have like some green iridescence to it. Like, you know, an oil when oil gets spilt on the pavement. Oh, yes. Ooh. So imagine a black ground with that over top. That's what color my dragon would be. So do you guys know those fish who the top of the fish is the same color as the like below them? So they have scales that can change colors, so they can't be seen oh, yes. from above. above or below. Yeah, that's what I would have on the bottom of my dragon. It would just be like sky color, invisibility on the dragon. So you could look up and it wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to see it. But what about when it's on the ground? Make it is a better it like, predator. Is it like a chameleon? Well, it's not hunting when it's on the ground. So, so it when doesn't it, need the scales. Yeah, true. Because they don't really have many natural predators, would they? Yeah, I agree. Anyway, well, do you want to start? I'm, a I'm their predator. Podcast, yeah actually to be fair humans would definitely be predators to the dragons yeah dude we 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 pray on everything so as soon as your dragon landed it would be pew pew yep have you uh seen lord of the rings yeah we hunt them it's good but they hunt they hunt the dwarves so it's okay natural side gotta save the dwarves (laughs) Anyways, this is a gaming podcast. I think we mentioned that already. Uh, Not about dragons, although that would be cool. I do like them. Uh, Today, because we seem to get distracted and we probably only have time for one topic, we are going to It is a juicy topic. It is a juicy one. There was a, a PlayStation Presents we had last week. So I believe it was roughly 20, 25 minutes worth of game trailers and releases and new stuff and cool things uh so we're gonna go over that do a little bit of a deep dive into that and that will probably take up the uh whole time so there is quite a few things to say quite a few things to go over and i guess we'll just jump straight into that won't we yeah so 
I want to start by just saying that this presentation, no matter how you feel about any of the games, or maybe there's nothing here for you at all, not interested in anything, from a presentation standpoint, it was really good. It was definitely my favourite PlayStation Presents that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Oh, there so you I, go. Because of the game. I have a question. Yeah. Unless I've missed something. Why are we calling it PlayStation Presents? It's the Sony State of Play, isn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Why are we calling it PlayStation Presents? I think it's PlayStation Presents, the Sony State of Play. Yeah, did we just make that name up? I, I don't no. know what you're doing. Okay. Uh, uh, we're talking about the State of Play. The PlayStation Presents. Yeah, there's not even like a Nintendo Presents. No. Or something like that. So it's not even like we've mixed up the consoles we just we just pulled that name out of our ass no nah, mate no nah, it's a real thing i swear to god anyways <laughs> we're googling it yeah i'm googling presents. it right now no nah. okay okay there's no google results yeah no nah, i made it up sorry anyways. it's a good name though <laughs> yeah Hi, it's, playstation Come it's on. actually a good name that's why i just went with it <laughs> i just convinced you well, it sounds legit. Yeah, it does. Yeah, no, you're right. That's Dan really wasn't fooled, though. I, I was, well, it's not that I, I wasn't fooled. I was sort of sitting here going, oh, my God, did I miss something? Did I watch the wrong video? But... <laughs> You've, like, done the wrong assignment at school. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking. Oh, no, I've done the wrong, wrong sounds assignment. Legit. Uh, okay, yeah. okay. Now that we've <laughs> Let's <laughs> rewind. cleared this up, the Sony yeah. State of Play happened March, last week, early March 2022. It was a good presentation. Yeah, regardless of whether you enjoyed any of the games or not, mm -hmm. it's a good presentation from the standpoint that we've got almost everything is releasing this year in it. Mm -hmm. And we got gameplay for, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think every single game got gameplay footage yeah which is good because i hate it when they release um ones like that and then it's only like cinematic trailers oh. you don't actually get to see how the game plays because cinematic trailers are always so different to oh yeah the actual game absolutely i mean like there's a cinematic trailer for the new uh ninja turtles game coming out it looks like the cartoon like the game is not like that you know so yeah it's just very non-indicative isn't it mm -hmm. Uh, quick side note, at the um, Game Awards this year, there was a very interesting trailer. It was just like Wonder Woman game and it just like panned up Wonder Woman. And it's like coming in like 2024 and that's all we got. It's like, okay. We still haven't got anything else on that, have we? I, I, like, I don't care if it's like what type of game, what does it look like? Like it, they literally just showed us Wonder Woman. I don't think Wonder Woman has enough hype to just be able to do that. Yeah, that, I that totally is, forgot about as it. A, yeah. As a superhero, I don't know if she has that force. Like, oh, we haven't... I don't know. Just her her movies are the best thing. Uh, we have yet to see the Batman, so. We're actually going to see that tonight, so don't don't judge us yet. But the Wonder Woman movies are the best of the like DC extended universe stuff. Oh, so maybe they're trying to roll. I, I agree, but what I'm saying is we haven't seen a Wonder Woman movie. I mean, a Wonder Woman game. Yes. Uh, recently, there were some there some old ones, but you know, like for example, if it was Batman. Like the Batman games are really good. I yeah, yeah, am yeah. a huge fan. And I, yeah, if it was a new Batman and they did that, I think, yeah, they could get away with it no problem, regardless of the movies. But with Wonder Woman, there's nothing to indicate that the game would be good. You know, story. Yeah, I, I see they, where you're coming from. Yeah, they for do sure. a terrible you job. Like, have you. Have you played Sorry. Iron Man? No. Uh, I played a I really, oh, I think it was on like the PS1. Oh, no, no, no. Even, yeah. Nah, no good. 
<laughs> yeah. Anyways, I don't like the point is I say so even if it was Batman, like give me something. Give me something else. Don't just tell me there's a game. End of story. You, you know? want gameplay. That's yeah, what you're exactly. To that didn't out. even have cinematic footage. It was just like literally a pan over Wonder Woman. And you're like, yeah, sweet. It wasn't a trailer or nothing. No. This presents, sorry, this state of play <laughs> was a lot different and we had gameplay footage for everything. Yeah, literally. Yeah, great. Love that. Yeah, you can't you can't really argue against that being the way to do a presentation, especially when it's just game after game after game. Like that, there was nothing in between. No, like they just cut all the fat, went went with what they thought was going to sell. So the first game we're here to discuss is actually probably the one that I like the look of the most. Has been getting a little bit of hate online, uh, which I'm a little bit dismayed about. Uh, that is, of course, Exo Primal. It is going to be a new IP from Capcom. Capcom, our lovely dinosaur friends. Dan, what do you think about this one? Because you told me earlier that you're also a big, big fan of uh, dinosaurs. Yeah, I, I like dinosaurs. I'm a fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, look, I, 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 my problem is, is uh, sometimes the. Uh, Blink has gone, and but yeah, I see dinosaurs. I want to play the game. So mm. yeah. for me, I, I think look, it's got some cool merits. Let's see where the story goes because it's something along the lines of in the year twenty forty three, some yep. wormholes or something vortexes. I can't remember what they called it. Open up, and now dinosaurs are coming through. I, yeah. Is that I, where the, the? Sorry. No, go on. Is this where the um, the flack is coming from? Like it's experiencing a lot of negative talk online. Is it because it just seems so random? Because the thought did cross my mind. Like I love dinosaurs and I love mechs, but I was kind of watching the trailer and I was just a little bit like, what? Yeah, but like there's just these holes these wormholes and they open up and there's just hundreds of dinosaurs pouring out. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it just seems a little bit random. Is that what people are saying about it? The hate uh, seems to be around the fact that people are worried. It's going to be like Anthem. Now Anthem is universally hated. Nobody likes Anthem. I didn't mind it when I picked it up for $2.50 from the uh, second-hand bin. So for 2 bucks 50 I, I enjoyed... You can't complain, can you? Uh, yeah, I thought it was all right. But it's also because Capcom produced Dino Crisis. And yes. people are irritated that it's not, it's not a that. Dino Crisis game. It's a new IP. So... There was nods um, to Dino Crisis in there as well, like the lady with the red hair. Everyone's yes, like, oh, the, red, the, red, the red hair dinos. comment. Yes, the red yeah, hair comment beautiful. is is going, yeah. Uh, look, bugger off. Who cares? Enjoy it. It looks fun. As it as looks I'm really fun. fun. I, I, I'm interested to see how the exoskeleton side of things happens. Like, is it going to mm -hmm. be, yep. uh, what's that sh movie with Pacific Rim? Yeah, uh, have you yeah. Seen that's... Pacific Rim, big, like, for those yes. that haven't, you're basically two people have to be in sync and they're inside massive robots. Now, when I say massive, I mean Empire State Building sized robots yep. that fight dinosaur looking things or kaiju, I think they are called. Kaiju. Yes, yep, so as I thought Pacific Rim was a bit average, so as as long as they haven't run with the uh, the weird exoskeleton stuff from that, and as long as there's no weird season pass bullshit, because uh, I'm getting a bit sick of that. I, I, think, I think there will be, because I think this is like a very like online multiplayer or like, you know, 
you know, four person team go mm-hmm. down, take some dinosaurs style of game. Yeah, that would work well in anyway, Yeah, I, I don't think it's uh, like a single player story as far well, as maybe I know. there'll be something. Yeah, I that's want what I want. Single player story. Yeah. I'm I yeah, am but at the point. I just don't I don't think that's gonna happen. In fact, know, I'm pretty I sure wanna, I wanna I wanna play with dinosaurs. Are you listening, I, Capcom? Dan wants a single player story, so therefore Dan should get what he wants. You know, I'm sure they are. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure they are listening. They're listening. Can you imagine how this was sold in Capcom? Like the guy who came up with this idea is like, all right, all right. He comes into the board of directors. He's like, guys, do you know what's awesome? Freaking mech suits, right? And they're all like, whoa, yeah, you're right. Mech suits are awesome. And he's like, do you know what else is awesome? Freaking dinosaurs, dinosaurs. man. And they're all like, <laughs> whoa. Yeah. And he's like, wait for it. Mech suits and dinosaurs. And they're all just like, yeah, cool, done. Love it. Great. Yeah, let's go with it. Do you think in like the hardest level, the dinosaurs will also be in mech suits? Oh. <laughs> I hope not. I hope so. But, no, uh, I'm sorry. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And they're like communicating with nods to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a T Rex raptor that just <laughs> nod at each other when they take you out. Yeah. <laughs> I, oh, yeah. I hope so. No, I, I think just, it's, I want dinosaurs. I want to. I think this game's getting flack because it looks a bit. Because of what you said, Laura, it's a bit like, this is a bit random and a bit weird. It's like, I'm just thinking about the way that a wormhole, if it really, yeah. like, How opened did... up, like, would they just be like, like, gush, they're gushing out. Yeah, How these does, like, one million dinosaurs I'm trying out? to, like, rationalise it in my mind. But I know that, like, <laughs> why am I trying to rationalise this? Yeah, it's a, it's a video game, you know? Yeah, don't try and rationalise it. Okay. I've also yeah. heard a bit of flack about those gushing dinosaurs all being the same. Yeah. So there's like not a whole lot of variety, but it's our first look. Like we'll see where it takes us. A lot of people don't like it. Ten-year-old Tom would have been so goddamn excited about this oh, because I'm he's that bloke. Pumped. Right, yeah. right. He's that guy on the board of directors who's like. Dinosaurs and mech suits are awesome. Yeah, kick me yeah. that. That's what I want. So no, I'm, that, that I'm still awesome. keen, and for ten year old me's sake, I will definitely be playing it. Yeah, That's yeah, awesome. it does look really awesome. But yeah. I was more excited about the second game. Yeah. Okay. okay. Ghostwire Tokyo. Yeah. Is that because I... it releases around your birthday. No, that's not why. No, it's. I mean, it's. It's cool. There's a lot of things I need to buy on that day. It's There's like good. three games that are coming out on that day. 25th of March is mm-hmm. the day that we're talking about. So next week. But you no, know, it's not because it comes out around my birthday that I am excited about it. It just looks friggin' rad. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't have a whole lot of opinion about this one, to be honest. I'm sure... It's not our first look at it because it is coming out next week, but... It's the first I've heard of this. Well, I've heard of Ghostwire, but I hadn't, like, seen any trailer trailers or anything about this game before. And I just I reckon it looks... I didn't see any awesome. dinosaurs, so... No, uh, there was no dinosaurs in this one. It reminds me of Astral Chain. A yes, bit. that's what I was thinking. Yeah, which is an amazing game on the Switch. Yeah. Um, I yeah. was getting some of those vibes as well. And the enemies just look really, really cool. Yeah, they do look, yeah, they do look pretty nice. Not going to lie. Yeah, I think it looks, it, I think it looks really fun. Like I'm really excited about all of the enemy designs. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. And this is, this one's coming to PS4 as well, isn't yeah. it? On March 25th, I believe. Yeah. I'm pretty sure yeah. it's also coming out on the PS4. Which is another thing, um, a generalized statement about this whole state of play is the fact that the PS4 is is going to be going strong all this year into next year. Yeah, they can't sell enough PS5s. Yeah, to... they can't make enough PS5s. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, they could sell them if they could make them. Exactly. But yeah. they're going to keep the PS4 going. Yep, for a while yet, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, which 
Dan and I have talked about at what we've all talked about, but I feel Dan and I specifically were, uh, uh, we understand, but we are a little bit upset that we, like the PS4 is holding the PS5 back. Yeah, yeah. I also agree. Mm, yeah, um, which is a bit of a shame, but look, I, I get it. I get it. If you only have a PS4, you probably want to play these games too, right? So. Yeah, well, they're just not going to be able to sell enough of the game otherwise. Yes, exactly. Like the com- they're not going to be able to make their money back. Like with games and things, it's like it's very much like you've got to come out strong because like in- interest in games and things like that, like and probably movies as well, I'm sure is the same. Like it fizzles out so fast. Yeah, the hype. You really need to get people hooked yep. initially because there's so many new things that are constantly coming out. Mm-hmm. So if a fraction of PlayStation players are only able to get this game to play, then, you know, the developers just probably aren't going to make their returns. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And also, everybody who owns the PS4 will be really upset. Hmm. They'll be pretty upset, I reckon. You know what? I would be, anyway. Where's Stoops? Why? Because this one's not even coming to the PS4. It's not. Oh, yeah, well, you know what? I was going to say that about um, well, there's another game of this on this list that also isn't coming to the PS4. Yeah, no, nah, it's not. And I specifically was going to talk about it. Not um, coming to the PS4. Yeah. yeah. And that it, in my opinion, I think that it means that the game is going to be better because it's not being held back. Yeah. So but every other strengths. game apart from this one and one other. <laughs> yeah, this are one available and one on other. The PS4 in this, uh, in this. I keep wanting to say presents in this state of play, rather. Sorry. What do you think yeah. of this game, Dan? Do you think it looks cool? Are you going to pick it up? Uh, well, I do not have a PlayStation. So. Dan's no. opinions are invalid. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, there you go. I'm just checking. Yeah, something it's also because. It will be available it for is, PC. It is. A, no, wait, hold on. Ghostwire Tokyo is available on PS4. You get... It is. It is, but you get certain pre-order bonuses for the PS5. That's what I thought I read somewhere. Okay. And I just, I just yeah, I Googled I it quickly. quickly it looks like it's available. It so there's like a lot of on... conflicting information. Anyways, it don't matter. I guess yeah. we'll uh either way you do point. get additional content for getting it on the PS5 and pre-ordering it on there. So oh, you can get a game on the PS5 rather than the PS4, definitely go that route. It's um it, it's 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 gonna be better, let's be honest. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for this. It does I said I don't have any opinions on it because I again I'd never seen it before. So and I'm sure this is like one of the final trailers, thing as though it's being released next week. But it does look awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it is something we're going to oh, There's so many games, so many games, what so I little time. like to bring up quickly, what Please. is your opinion on the automatic PlayStation 5 upgrades if you buy the PS4 version? And that version tends to be cheaper. Mm, have you, yes. Have you been seeing that? There's a lot of slack online right now about PS4 versions automatically getting upgraded to the PS5, which I think yep. is a good thing. And I think that that needs to happen right now because you can't purchase PS5 easily. And if you want the game, you purchase it on PS4 and then, hey, I just got a PS5, so you get the upgrade. I agree. I think yep. that's really good. But what I don't understand is why is the PS5 version more expensive when you get the same game? And why is it why is it selling? So a lot of the time uh, that upgrade comes at a cost of a couple of dollars. So it might be like 10 bucks. Uh, there are there are a lot of free ones. Uh, the latest Horizon game, of course, Horizon Forbidden West was free. And that was a big question surrounding that one. I believe that's probably um, what you've been hearing, Dan, is why would you buy the PS5 version when you can just buy the PS4 version, put that in your console and then just upgrade it straight away. And Mm -hmm. it it costs less. Mm. Uh, For me personally, 
again, being this like physical collector and wanting, I, I don't trust a lot of digital stuff. So many yeah. games that have come and gone from digital stores, stores shut down, you know, rights change, all that stuff copyrights lapse blah 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 i'd rather just have a ps5 version natively on what whatever it is on my disc i want i want that version there um and i just it also takes up less space on my playstation hard drive as well so that is my do you think it's fair that you're paying more well i mean it probably costs more to make the PS5 version, maybe. I mean, if it was exactly the same game that you're getting, then it wouldn't have to upgrade, right? Yeah, but no, upgrade but doing the upgrade free. for free. On some games, but then some sometimes it's not yeah, free. Yeah, sometimes but it's, it's, it's not. Yeah. It's those the top, that are. top AAA games that they're doing free. So what mm-hmm. I'm saying is I don't think it makes a hell of a lot of sense. Like why? I mean, I, I get Tom's point. It's actually a really good point. But at the same time, you should be paying the same as the PS4 version, unless they provide clarity. There's no clarity behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm just assuming that maybe it costs more, but maybe it doesn't. Yeah, but maybe the disc is more expensive to print on for the PS5 or something. I, I, yeah, I, the, yeah, no, no one, idea. I don't know why, but yeah, for my answer to why I buy the PS5 version is that uh, I also have a PS5, so it makes me happy when I have a little case that says PS5. Uh, <laughs> that's cool as well. Uh, yeah, but no, you're right, Dan. It is a, it is an interesting point. Mm. Uh, next up, we've got Strangers of Paradise, which is a Final Fantasy origin game uh there is a demo available right now actually you mm-hmm. can go onto the playstation store and download yourself a demo square enix is hard at work this year we've already seen uh the absolutely beautiful triangle strategy be released for switch as a switch exclusive and we're getting this well we've got the demo already uh, I really like Square because they tend to listen and to their audience. On the demo, oh, well. uh, you, the save file actually goes across as well. So your progress yes. on the demo <laughs> moves over to yep. the, like to the full game. Prologue, prologue demos yeah, where you good. play the Which, first bit and then it, yep. Yeah, I, I think that's fantastic. I hate doing oh, a demo it's the way to, way. and then going, I really like this game. And then downloading it, and then going. Well, now I just I just mm-hmm. did that bit. I just spent an hour doing that bit. Yeah, all over again. And that brings me back to my point with Square Square Enix being really good at listening to people. Uh, they've actually released demos in the past. Triangle Strategy is a perfect example of. I released a demo like a year ago and said, "Hey, how can we make this game better?" Yeah, that's right. They and did there was too. A full like, yep, sweet. All right, we've done that. Put all these extra things, and then they released the demo. Uh, a couple of months ago now, the prologue demo again, first three or four hours, save save file transfers across. And it's great. Like we've discovered a few games from those type of demos. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, I think it's definitely the best way to do a demo, especially when it's such a like expansive one. Like five hours is, that's a lot of hours. That's like yeah. I don't know. A shift at a dinner shift at the restaurant. Yeah. I don't know how long this, uh, <laughs> this Final Fantasy demo is going to go for, but I assume it's going to be somewhat, somewhat hefty. substantial. Yeah, um, Dan, are you a big Final Fantasy fan? Uh, yes and no. So <laughs> I thought for sure you were going to say no Me after too. the hesitation. Yeah, long pause. <laughs> No, look, I am a Final Fantasy fan from the point of view that I I think it would be an enjoyable game to play, but I have not played Final Fantasy in a long time. And Mm -hmm. not that I was necessarily put off by my last experience. It's just I remember it being so involved and in-depth that Mm -hmm. I... I do not have the time to do that every time a Final Fantasy game is 
released. Although I am pouring a significant amount of time into Elder Scrolls. It's Yeah, that's arguably bigger. Yeah. Well not even arguably is. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm get to ride a dragon though. And... I knew you'd say dragon. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's that's sort of my thing at the moment. But I do like the law behind it. I do actually watch YouTube videos on Final Fantasy law. So that's what I mean by yes, yes and no. I I think they do a very good job at backstory and all that sort of stuff. So I do like watching YouTube videos on it. Uh, but playing it hasn't come across my desk. Mm-hmm. No, fair enough. Well, that's the thing about these, I guess, spin-offs, you'd call it, because it's not the next numbered Final Fantasy game. It's just uh, Final Fantasy Origins. So it's just more lore into, into one of the characters um, from, mm. from one of the numbered games. So, yeah, you, you're right there. There is so much to know and so, just so much to do in all of them. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty keen for that. Might pick it up. Probably won't have time. I've still got to play Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yeah, exactly. That is higher on the list for I've had it for ages. I was hunting for it for months, and Mm -hmm. I couldn't find a physical version, and I did want it physical, and then I finally found it a couple weeks ago. Yep. So I need to play that. Yeah, exactly. No, no, definitely definitely get on that first. Maybe one day. Yeah. Let's be honest. Final Fantasy XX is going to come out by the time we have time to play Stranger of Paradise. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> All right. Up next is, I think, apart from dinosaurs, the obvious dinosaurs, I am very excited for this next one. This is the other game that is the PS5 exclusive, mm-hmm. uh, which I'm quite happy about. Uh, that is, of course, Forspoken. Now, this was originally meant to come out later this month, uh, which was... Again, I was a bit in a bit of trouble there because I've got so many games to play. They're this is a up. really busy month. It's a, been a busy three months. It's just huge game after huge game after huge game at the moment. It's insane. Um, like Laura hasn't finished Elden Ring. I haven't finished Horizon Forbidden West yet. Like, there's just so much stuff to play. <laughs> Anyways, Forspoken has now been delayed to October. Uh, I guess they needed some more time. I'm more than happy for a company to delay a game to make sure it's perfect and it's polished. Me too. Yeah. Dan, do you agree with that? No, nah, really so make it shit. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> See, uh, we all it know was, what happened with uh, Yeah, yeah. certain butcher not yeah. being available. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think yeah. waiting is, is the best, best tactic. Oh, uh, yeah. Releasing a game that is not ready just... I, I, Look, there's two there's two schools of thought with it really. If the game is not groundbreaking in terms of graphics and other bits and pieces, delaying it could cost you a significant amount of uh, followership. But mm-hmm. at the same time, if the game is that stuff that it is not ready for like October's fairly far away. Yeah, so it is. Clearly, yeah. clearly they acknowledged that there was some stuff that needed to be done to make it ready. And, you know, for me, I don't care. Take your time. Make it better. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah, no, again, it's good. It's a good thing because there's so much stuff coming out right now. And, uh, yeah, don't have, don't have time to play it at the moment. So I'll definitely be picking that up in October. I'm, yeah, I'm just really excited for this big open world RPG uh emphasis on speed that looks like so the main character is really quite fast and the traversal through the environment apparently there's a bit like big focus on the traversal through the environment which is i know laura you're a huge fan of that with your open world adventures just exploring Mm -hmm. yeah i love exploring and i love the fact that it's like a a chick yeah a female lead as well yeah 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 it's um, also very cool 
Yeah, hundred percent. No, no, I'm definitely, definitely into that. And the some of the spells she can perform. Yeah, the moves that she yeah. can do look really, really good. The combat looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, the combat looks really good, and also the enemy design looks really cool in that game as well. They yes. had heaps more gameplay footage in this state of play. Yeah, than we've seen before. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, that was we've seen it uh, bits and pieces of it, bunch of cinematic stuff. And then some just, yeah, like traversal through the world. And it was like, yeah, but this is like this um, gameplay footage here was there was a lot of action. It looks there? very, very sick. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. 100%. Dan, anything you would like to add? No, there's quite a few people complaining about the music used. So I was going to get your thoughts on that. Being the, the music. Uh, yes. In for spoken. Yes, apparently uh, it reminded really people the of music. like Call of Duty or Battlefield. Okay, was a couple of the comments that I've seen. Okay, um, I can't remember the music, so I obviously didn't think it was that bad. I can't say I paid too much attention to it. Um, I Neither don't think I. the music in the games that you mentioned dan is anything groundbreaking it's neither good nor bad uh just is what it is so i mean dude it's 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 a freaking trailer man like there might not even be the music from the game i suppose yeah exactly like there's there's a lot of trailers that aren't in the game so like look if that's your only complaint then it's it's not a bad complaint to have i guess Get over yeah it, but, true Get over you've got to complain about something but you know, that's the oh, oh, geez, tell yeah. me about it tell me about way it. of the world so mm-hmm. but yeah no I, I think i think it looks good this would be my uh second choice uh yeah this would be my my second choice i'm still like X after yeah. XO Primal, yeah. I mean, I know it's like multiplayer stuff, but yeah, I don't know. They use the word co op a couple of times from memory, so I'm still a bit, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of co op stuff, so I'm just, uh, yeah, my head keeps going back to dinosaurs. What can I say? Yeah. I like the but your second choice that's pretty good, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah, these are my. F- Two games as well, actually. The Dino Max. I'm just really Ghost excited Ghost. for Ghostwire. No, I have to three. I've got. I have to have three games. There is one more that I'm really excited of, but it's near the end. Is oh that yeah. The same. Me too. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, it's not the same. Well, I guess I'm going to have to have four then. We will. Are you? Are you keen for Dinosaur Max as well? Yeah, I'm keen for Dinosaur Max. I don't think I'm as keen as you guys are for Dinosaur Max. I think I am probably more excited about Ghostwire Ghostwire and Forspoken. Yeah. And uh, and one near the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one near the end. I know what you're thinking of. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, Yeah, definitely keen for that. All right, moving on. I love this. So in Laura's notes that we've got here, she's written, Transformers Overwatch. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about too. Yeah. It's a perfect description. It is a really good description. Yeah. So I've got Gundam Evolution, which is, I guess it's more mech suits than Transformers, but. Dude, they look like Transformers. They do. No, no, they do. Do they transform though? Oh. Because that's like. You know, it that's wouldn't the defining, surprise me. That's the defining If you factor. look up. You look up a picture of one of those mechs from Gundam Evolution. Mm. Look up a transformer. No, no, I'm not. I'm not saying you're wrong. I just. I don't know if they turn into cars. I want them to turn into cars now. Now I just want a Transformers Overwatch. Well, you've got it. It's Gundam <laughs> Evolution. It's no, coming out soon. I want to play as Optimus Prime. You know what mm. else ten-year-old me loved? Transformers. I'm guessing you're gonna say. Actually me now also loves it i've got a big box of them i pulled them out not long ago transformed all of them put them back in the box he did he brings them out and he's like oh i should sell these i could probably get like a lot of money for these and then he's like but nah and then i just played with them for like three hours mm-hmm. <laughs> no, dude, i'm not selling them. No. 
That's it's great. Yeah. It looks fun, but I probably won't be picking this one up. No, I mean, look, uh, it's it is a first person shooter, Gundam Evolution. So Dan is our first person shooter kind of aficionado. Uh, Laura is a big Overwatch fan, so I guess I guess we can kind of ask you about it. I'm I'm definitely the least qualified to talk about these type of games, so I'm going to let you two discuss what you think about this one. Well, I do really love Overwatch. It does look very similar, mm. doesn't it? Graphically. It, yeah. Yeah, it, it just looks like a, like a little bit of a clone. It is. This is mm-hmm. free to play, <laughs> this one. It's free to play. Oh. Oh, okay, that makes it a bit better. I didn't realise that. Because I was like, even the my, font is the same. Gundam Evolution. Yeah, it's free to play and features 12 initial mobile suit units. All players can pilot for free. So, uh, yeah. I mean, it's probably worth picking it up if you enjoy Overwatch, considering it's free. Uh, yeah, it can be since it's free. Why not? This doesn't excite me very much. I, I think mm. the problem I think at the moment is there's just such a saturation of these. Ever since Fortnite came out, it's like an absolute saturation of FPS season pass stuff like yeah there's even though like, Fortnite's huh? I just want to add that Fortnite's, Fortnite's third what? person third person yeah not first person yes, yeah. yes I know but you, you get my meaning um <laughs> yeah no I, no, I, don't, I just had to disagree drift. with you mate you know yeah. we yeah. are here that's true that's true but uh <laughs> yeah green is one of Tom's favorite things it is. yeah it is <laughs> But, you know, we got Halo, Apex Legends, Call of Duty, mm-hmm. uh, Battlefield. Battlefield. I, I, I reckon that's going to go free to play soon because uh, something has to happen there. Nobody's, yeah, nobody's playing that game at all. Yeah, I, I the think it's down to like 2,000 active players or something like that. I saw the other day. Oh, so uh, Destiny as well. Yeah, yeah, Destiny. But yeah, there's so much, and I just don't think this game in particular is. You don't think it's going to be competitive in the market? I don't think it's that. I don't think it's exciting enough to be that competitive in the market for me. Yeah. Anyway, it just. I think it's got that mech suit like draw card, if that's what you're. And like you know. But you know what it doesn't have. What dinosaurs? Dinosaurs. <laughs> Laura should be doing oh, all the science God. sound effects every time we say dinosaur. She should be doing a sound effect. I didn't they use like a koala raw like in the T Rex in uh, Jurassic Park? Uh, the no. raw, wait, are you telling me that the raw that the T Rex makes is actually a koala? No, it's a combination of like. 15 different sounds or something ridiculous, but I'm pretty sure a koala is in there. Is it the main uh, one? No. I think you're <laughs> I have wrong. have to go back. And I think what wrong. they did it just... is they went back in time, recorded a yeah, T-Rex, that's... and yep. then came back. Uh, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how they know that it can't see, stay still. Makes sense. Yes. That's far now more let's... possible. Let's not ruin the movie by scientific facts either, because uh, technically okay. the T Rex uh, apparently purrs like a cat. Is technically what it is capable of doing. Yes, yes it doesn't actually. Yes, and it can actually see if you move. But yeah, uh, let's yeah. not let's not ruin the movie. Pretty sure. Yeah. Jurassic Park is a good movie regardless of its inaccuracies. No, now all. the real question that yeah. I need answered yeah. is what sounds do koalas make? <laughs> because I honestly don't know. Now I'm thinking Dang. to myself, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that's it, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's like a piss off, I'm sleeping sound. <laughs> 
the epitome of angry Aussie sound. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. I mean, they're, they're called drop bears for a reason. Those things are dangerous, man. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, drop bears are koalas? Mm. I thought they were like a mythical being. No, oh, well, no, no, that's, that's first. The, that's, the, that's the joke. That they no one's scared out. tourists. Are drop bears real? Are they just koalas? Are they not real? Who knows? That's for us Australians to know and no one else to ever find out because okay. we're going to keep it secret. Okay. Mm. The, you know, the Aussies are going to come for me now. Yeah, they are. <laughs> so you're our Kiwi presenter, can't you? <laughs> 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 uh, all right, let's 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 move on to our next one. I've only got a limited amount of time left in my life mm. after that, so... Just, now, do you does know anybody is- with with Gundam Evolution? Does, this, does anybody just get Gundam style vibes, or is it just me? No, it's, I, I understand. Just imagine the robots doing this, and especially with the free to play stuff, you know, in Fortnite, how you can like buy those little dances. Yeah. Oh, so like, you know what? That's so really do a crossover. Yeah, that have a lot of sense. <laughs> Game Gundam crossover. <laughs> oh. oh, God. Oh, uh, all right. Moving on. Moving on. You know what Dan is not a fan of? Yeah, I think he made it very clear a couple of episodes ago when we were talking about the Nintendo Direct that Dan is not a fan of remasters and remakes. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So... Dan is not going to be a fan of this next announcement, even though I think it was pretty up there in terms of like announcements of this one. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty keen. Mm. The Turtles Cowabunga Collection. Now, in this one, you get 13, 13 Ninja Turtles games. Everything from arcade games, NES, SNES games. Uh, there's some, uh, there are a, a bunch of stuff. Turtles games. <laughs> yeah. 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 Se- Sega games. I forgot the, forgot the name of the uh, console there for a second. Uh, yeah. So a whole, but 13 of them, this is going to be multi-platform. It's coming to Xbox, to Switch, PlayStation, it's going to be physical as well. All for like, I think it's 40 US dollars. So value for money here, guys. You can spend like 600 and get a arcade cabinet in your house with one or two of these games on it if you want. Or you can just spend like, you know, so 80, 60, 80 Australian and uh, own 13 of them. And play them on whatever console you want. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Laura? Yeah. It looks really cool. It's freaking Ninja Turtles, man. Yeah, it, it looks like it looks really cool. Dan, I'm unfortunately I have to ask you, because you're also involved in this podcast, and I feel bad if I skipped over you. Go on, tell us why you hate it. Now, most of these games haven't actually been available for like the last 30 years, so I think that's appropriate. I it's true. It's been like 30 years for some of these games that they've been accessible to to people. So allowing mm-hmm. the younger generation, uh, I guess, to play these games, I, I think it's cool. But again, I could yeah, be completely you're... biased because I freaking love Ninja Turtles. I love Raph. Uh, so, yeah, I could be completely biased because, yeah, Ninja Turtles is up there with dinosaurs as far as I'm concerned. It's like Dragon Ball Z, oh, Dinosaurs, turtles. Ninja Turtles. Um, I'm in that. I'm in that realm. I love, yeah. So it, that could just be that. Will I buy it? No. <laughs> Will you buy games? It? I don't have time. Uh, yeah, look, I, I'm really excited for Shredder's Revenge, which is the new Ninja Turtles game that is potentially coming out at the end of this year so i feel like i feel like the kawabunga collection comes out mid this year 
And then they're just building hype for Shredder's Revenge, which will be near the end. So yeah. it makes a lot of sense from a marketing standpoint. Uh, as Dan said, it is 13 games. I don't, I probably don't have a lot of time. I probably am just going to pick up Shredder's Revenge. Yeah. Because uh, like, while there is no way in hell I have tried all 13 of them, definitely a whole bunch on there i would never have touched in my life i have played a few of them really fun don't get me wrong love i'm also love ninja turtles uh, i'm not super biased i don't only like remakes and remasters when they're ninja turtles looking at um someone over there uh i also agree Raphael is my favorite ninja turtle Unfortunately, on a lot of these games, he's not the best character though because of his weapon choice. Doesn't have doesn't have very good range, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, that's just but that's okay. rubbish at using him. Yeah, look, um, <laughs> yeah, I, he's not wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, I like value for money. This is this is great, and I, I see a lot of people saying this was the announcement of. I almost said direct this time of the state of play. This is what they they are most keen for. It looks really good, but I'm probably not going to get it. But mm. I like that it exists. I agree with that. I think, you know what? I might pick it up just to have it, just to have like the physical copy because, again, I like physical things and I almost spent like $15,000 on a Switch, Switch game <laughs> the other week. Yeah, Tom's like, can I borrow three thousand dollars? I was like, "Yeah, but like, what for?" And he's like, "Oh, like a thousand Switch games or something." I was like, "No, <laughs> why? I want all of them. I don't have all of them. This guy no. did have all of them." Yeah. Anyways, that's a whole that's a whole different kettle of fish. I'll probably pick up the physical version because it's going to have cool art because of freaking Ninja Turtles. Let's be mm-hmm. honest. Uh, will I ever play it is a whole <laughs> is a whole other question. I hope so. I hope I have time. One day, maybe. If I had kids, I would pick it up and I would give it to them. To them. Yes, yes. I feel like if you have kids and you played these games in the arcade back in like the late 80s, early 90s, then you should 100% get this for your kids so they can experience that. That's awesome. Yeah, how's yeah, definitely. No, you're right, Laura. Do that. Dan, do that. Make daughter your daughter play this. Kids. She will not wow. enjoy this. Um, gonna not make yet. Her, you're going to make her enjoy this. No, she's, That's she's a good thing about kids. You mold them into whatever you want them to be. <laughs> uh, she still has a go at me about Pokemon Cafe Remix. <laughs> Does not like that. Still brings it up. Oh, really? Wow, it really yeah. made an impact and negatively. Yeah, she really does not like it. Remember that game you made me play? I didn't like it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, next time she wants chicken nuggets for dinner and you're going to be like, oh, but I don't like chicken nuggets. She's going to be like, Dad, remember that game? Remember you that game? I didn't you like. are going to be bribed for the rest of your life. You're going to be blackmailed by that. Yeah. game like Pokemon Cafe mix yeah. this is funny I'm sorry I, sw- I, I swear it's targeted at a younger audience maybe just not that young yeah not that young <laughs> maybe in a few years she'll pick it back up anyways I feel like we uh, mentioned earlier something about kaijus which is actually a good segue into this if this only one. it wasn't like 45 minutes ago it's not yeah, exactly it's not pacific rim like dan did mention with the kaijus uh this one is a uh, kaiju brawler so i'm not gonna lie i kind of don't really remember this one i watched the presents or oh, the state of play god damn it you think really? i hadn't seen it at all you keep calling it presents you think i would remember everything and I took notes. I like we literally watched it last night together. Yeah, I I don't know. This obviously didn't well, make an impact. It on didn't me. have like a huge trailer or anything, but it base it essentially is just like exactly what it sounds like. It's like a it's there's a couple of giant. It's online. Yeah. So there's some giant kaiju's, a small city, and you just. Wah, wah, 
remember it well on the other ones. It's called Giga Bash. Yeah. Yeah, there was like a Rampage <laughs> 2 from the 64 and PlayStation 1 era. I mm -hmm. have little to no interest. Yeah, in it, it didn't look... Yeah, I did like it Rampage, really, but... It didn't look like there was a huge amount to it Yeah, at this point, I at least, I guess. I sort of agree with Tom. I was... Like, I felt really drawn in by the dinosaurs. And I felt really drawn in by um, Forsaken, Forspoken. Saying Forsaken, because Elder Scrolls, there's a group of people <laughs> in there called Forsaken. So now I'm getting the... I killed all of them, though, You're as a werewolf. Strong. So, but yeah, for me... Crazy. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. It just there was nothing there for me with this game in particular. I just uh, it was like it was there and then it was gone. I did watch uh, the PlayStation presents three times. Jokes. I watched State of Play. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I watched it three <laughs> times and. Uh, I've definitely mentally focused a lot on, I, I think to go back to it, not that we really want to go backwards, but Ghostwire also sort of spoke to me a little bit, I guess, because I, I thought it looked quite cool. But really, this Gigabash is not, is not on my... No, it wasn't yeah, it's on not my... on my radar. No. Oh, no. Okay, well, at least we're all in a grand state. Look, I mean, if you love... Kaijus and fighting games, and you are super excited for this. Good, good for you. Nothing against that. Uh, we've said it on this podcast before, and we will say it again. We're not into gatekeeping anything. If you are super excited for the latest Candy Crush update, I know I use that as an example all the time. Then good on you. You are definitely able to call yourself a gamer. Um, but not everything's for everyone, and this isn't for us. It looks like it needs something more needs like some zhuzh yeah there's some pizzazz it needs a bit of zhuzh, a bit of zhuzh. <laughs> okay that means different things in certain cultures anyway so <laughs> what else does it mean oh i feel like we shouldn't ask is that r18 uh, yeah yeah we can't go really? into that i will oh, mention my bad uh, <laughs> completely off the young lady's comments this in particular has the least comments on the playstation blog versus everything else interesting there you go so, so it's not just but us. in saying that ghostwire has the second least oh so, really, really? Yes, so Again, just a, I'll, I'll, I'll do a quick recap. So Exo Prime's got sixteen comments. I th Ghost think it's Wire because Ghostwire is like it's not a new announcement. You know what I mean? So people aren't talk like they've already talked about it. They've already seen it. Like it's coming out mm -hmm. soon. That's my theory. Yeah. What were the other ones, Dan? Well, Ninja Turtles has the most with 52, yeah, significantly yeah. higher than anyone else. So the, the next highest one, I think, was 16. So uh, clearly Ninja Turtles is has a lot of excitement, but nobody seems to give a crap about Giga Bash. Yeah. yeah, look, again, each to their own. If you're super excited, that's fine. It's just not oh, yeah, for us. So that's okay. There is one that a lot of people are super excited for that I'm not. Uh, it's not really my speed. Um, apparently, it's really, really popular. And as soon as I finish watching the state of play, there's so many people like, oh, the only thing I'm interested in is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure some fighting game it's called like all stars yeah that sounds fight about or something right. yeah yeah jojo's bizarre adventure all stars fight 
Uh, I mean, I I heard of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. JoJo's is like a really popular is it anime? Yeah. Oh, it's an anime, is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah probably just, a manga too. I've heard of it. I haven't. I haven't seen it. No, I don't know about it or anything. You know, mm-hmm. I've just heard the name before. Uh, yeah, but I've people got, are I've... people are really excited. Dan, you don't yeah. know anything either. No, look, I I'm not a big fighting game fan. Uh, my brother is. My brother was you like love number Dragon Ball Z. They're like all fighting yes. games. Yes, but I like I don't like the two-dimensional fighting games i like you know like dragon ball fighter z i did didn't like that i liked xenoverse 2 because it was three-dimensional oh, it's more can... 3d yeah okay yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so fair enough, fair enough. my brother's really into this sort of stuff like he i yeah. can't remember if it was mortal Kombat or street fighter but he was like ranked seven in the world or something like that so yeah wow. that's awesome see i like yeah. them uh, those two uh, in particular that mm-hmm. you just mentioned, Street Fighter, uh, classic. How we did talk about that on a, on a recent podcast. And, I mean, Mortal Kombat's just, I mean. It's a classic. Yeah, I, I, I love it. It's, it's, it's fun. It's gory. It's ridiculous. That's, that's totally up my alley. Mm-hmm. But I do think that when you've played one of these, you've kind of played them all. It's just a different skin, isn't it? Yeah, you've got to have something special. Like Dragon Ball Fighter Z, Dan, as you mentioned, that's got Dragon Ball. Like, that's its thing, you know? Um, and that's the reason I got it, because, I mean, you know, it's, it's, got, it's got Goku in it. I, I want it. Um, I'm, I'm also with Dan on the Dragon Ball fan. I, I like them. I like all the balls. They're good. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyways. That's enough about balls. Um, yeah, fighting games. Laura's talking about this one. Jujing, You're talking about balls. This match <laughs> made in heaven. Oh, okay, like I that. think I understand the meaning of zhuzh now, but in yeah. New Zealand we call it something different. Yeah, like, like I, I know what you mean. I always, anyways, I always took it like yeah. you. It like goes you by have, a different term in yes, New Zealand. it does, yeah. Um, Thing. JoJo's... <laughs> God, fluffing. Is it? That's oh, obviously not what you call it here. No, I've never heard of that before, but it's great. I love it. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds so, like, innocent, innocent. isn't it? Yeah, it's good. Oh, crap. Um, so what I was going to say is Dragon Ball has... Uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z has the Dragon Ball characters. Mortal Kombat has that brutality to it. Street Fighter is just like the OG, so it's got that to it. This has JoJo's, which would be great if I was a fan of JoJo's. Again, it's just for the JoJo's fans. Like Fighter Z was for the Dragon Ball fans. This is for the JoJo fans, which I am not one of. Um, sorry. I, I really like the art style, though. I like it's got, it reminds me of, like, um, comic book kind of art with yes. the bold black outlines and, like, the shading. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree with that. It does look really nice. Mm. Um, but, yes, just, it is another fighter game. Just on yeah, the comics exactly. and Dragon Ball, just, just for a little bit of history, facts, do you know yeah. why Super Saiyan was introduced? Ah, no, no, please. Fun facts. So the Super Saiyan of Dragon Ball Z, for those of you that don't know what Dragon Ball Z is, feel free to leave the podcast. But (laughs) uh, basically the reason he did that was because it was much easier for the artist to draw white hair uh, because in the the mangas they're black and white. And it was very hard for them to do the black hair uh, or more time yep. consuming. So, of course, he, yeah, cheap print as well. Yeah, so he created the Super Saiyan transformation oh, originally to, to make it easier to draw. I but like then it just that. turned out to be super cool. 
I like that. Yes. I actually read a fact like that the other day. Do you know why there's a lot of blue X-Men? No. It's because comic books were printed in those three colors, magenta, cyan, and yellow. Yeah. Like okay. the three printing colors. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's easy. And instead of combining a bunch of them, it's easy to just print in just blue, yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that does have so it's that practical element behind it cool. there's a bunch of other things but yeah pra- practicality always comes first anyways yeah. that's a random comic, facts, comic book like man- manga facts for today uh yeah jojo's dan anything else before we go to the next one no nah, let's move on cool uh laura the next one does look pretty cool yeah i agree um it's called trick to yomi mm. and I really like the fact that it's in black and white. I agree. I really like that as well. Is this an indie game? Uh, um, no, no. It's... Flying Wild Hog. Huh? Those are the developers, not the publisher, though. Okay. Yeah. Um, it and looks, Leonard. It Leonard looks Minkari. indie because because of its black and white style, I guess. But that doesn't mean it's, it is. No, it doesn't mean that it is. I do wonder if it's going to be like, if it's going to, if it's just a stylistic choice or does it play into the story? Like, is he in another realm? Is he in like another, a parallel dimension or a dream world or something like that? All very good questions. Mm. I've never played a black and white game before. So, well, I mean, except like, you know, before... You know, on the game color Boy, were... before the Game Boy Color. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. but an intentionally black yes. and white game. I haven't played one before, so it looks pretty interesting. Yeah, I love the art style, and this—that's what stood out to me here. And I think I did a really good job in the in the trailer of being like, love really pushing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Reminds me of um, noir, like film noir. Yeah, true. Uh, yeah. I think that is a lot to do with the black and white. Yes, uh, art style, but. Yeah, I that piqued my interest. Uh, action adventure game, I believe, and it is coming to all consoles except for the Switch. Yeah, not the Switch, but it is coming nice. to Xbox, PS4, PC, Wit Windows, or, or all of that. So, yeah, that's really nice. I, yeah, I'm really excited about this game as well. I think. Yeah, me too. I think PlayStation these state of plays also do a really good job of. Um, like they're not all just PlayStation exclusives, no? Like the Kalabunga yeah. collection was. It is. It is available on every platform there is. So it gets everyone hyped, mm-hmm. and then other people who might not have watched this, like Nintendo fans or Xbox fans, are able to get something out of it. Even if you don't own a PlayStation, like um Dan over here, there is still games that he is able to pick up, and it just draws yeah, people's attention to Sony in doing so. Mm, yeah, good point. Yeah, so I think I think that's a smart move on yeah. their behalf. I think that's something that uh, Nintendo doesn't do doesn't do as well. It in, does. In it directs. definitely doesn't do that as yeah. much, does no, it? No, not at all. But yeah, I'll definitely pick this game up. Yeah, I think it looks fantastic. What about you, Dan? What's it? Uh, no, it's a no go from me. I I yeah. mine's uh, medically bound though. I don't know if medically is the right word. Uh, my eyes have trouble with black and white. So oh, okay. I think this game, unless is some pretty good contrasting and other things, I, I will struggle. I struggle a lot with dark games, so I have to have my brightness like way up to compensate. And even in Elder Scrolls, I find myself using... It's actually quite interesting on my computer monitor because i got my series x hooked up to my computer monitor because i prefer to play that way i am mm-hmm. generally okay and i use the candlelight uh magic very limited which is basically like an orb that flies above you but if i use cloud gaming yeah, in on mm-hmm. the ipad so i play with my ipad air sometimes i'll play xbox on that it is very dark. 
So the standard settings uh, are what get pushed through to the cloud gaming rather than my unique settings that I have on my monitor. So I find myself basically using the candle magic the whole time. Uh, well, when I'm in a room, when I'm outside, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, but yeah, so for me, I think based on what I saw from the trailer and uh, the few stills, I think my eyes would, uh, I think I'd cop a massive migraine trying to play yeah. this game. So for me, that's a, yeah, that's a shame, but completely fair. Yeah. Like even, even like movies that are really dark. Uh, there's a mm. there's a few that come to mind, but yeah, if I, I can't, if, if we're in a cinema and the movie's too dark, I can't watch it. I need to leave. It, it really, yeah, it's, yeah it, it goes havoc with my eyes, and then yeah, you know, I start to get a headache, and I get I got a oh. family history of migraines. So yeah, I, fair yeah, enough. I'm out of that, there before, man. That's a... before the migraine hits. I'm gone. I'm gone. So fair yeah, enough. yeah. Look, uh, it looks interesting, I suffer from though. And also, not not a yeah. comfortable feeling. That's oh. no, no, exactly. I mean, but it looks good. So for those that, but yeah, I, I just try and stay away from uh, those black and white sort of games. Just don't want to put my don't want a headache, basically. No, fair enough. No, that's, yep. that's com completely fair. Totally understand that. Yeah, no, I, I'm super keen. We will be picking this one up. I would say. Mm -hmm. Next up, we had a bit of DLC. It wouldn't be one of those uh, state of plays or a presentation from any of these companies without some DLC coming into it. Uh, this is actually quite a substantial update, though. Uh, one of the... It's not my favourite PS5 game, but I know it is very highly rated. Uh, we're, of course, talking about the fantastic Returnal. Uh, I only say it's not my favourite because I'm not a huge fan of roguelikes. Uh, I played Hades and I thought that was phenomenally good, but that is definitely the exception to the rule rather than the, the rule itself. Yeah, I just, I don't know. Going back to the start of a game just kind of an annoys me sometimes. I'd probably rage quit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is quite a difficult game as well, but it is meant to be like really good and one yeah. of the best, one of the best games on the system. It does look really good for yeah, sure. It does. I just don't know if I would love it. Yeah, just not for me. Uh, and I, but I do know again, a lot of people are excited um, for for more content in Returnal. So the DLC is coming out uh, just next week. Actually, uh, it'll be a week. A week after this podcast airs, uh, the twenty second of March, and it will add. It's my birthday. It certainly is. It will add co op mode, which I guess is going to make it easier. Yeah, that sounds like it'll be cool if they manage to do that right. Yep, and they are adding. Uh, basically, it reminds me of the Battle Tower from some of the Pokemon games. So basically, it's just an unlimited run type of type of a deal that you're not tower aiming to. Tower of STIs. Uh, <laughs> huh? That doesn't sound like a place I want to be. No. Syphilis. At least without hand sanitizer. Tower of syphilis. <laughs> what? Is that what it's called? What are you talking about? What an interesting I have, choice. I may have added in a couple of those. <laughs> But it's essentially that. What? What? What are you? My God! Tom has to Google it now. He's like, "What?" I'm a bit so like. My, uh, my understanding was: was this a free update? Yes, yes, it is. Hundred percent. Oh, Sisyphus. Okay, okay. yeah, it does sound I a lot. See, like I see what you mean here. Yeah, no. you didn't even add words. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. was like, what? They, they walked right into that. Yeah. Um, yeah, they did. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, it's only somebody as sick as Dan, though, that would bring it up, isn't it? <laughs> you guys are the well, ones bringing up juicing and balls. 
Yeah. I, just, I just had to add to it. What? It's left out. nothing in New Zealand. Dan wanted a turn. Dan wanted a turn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is free DLC. What do you what do you think about that? That's cool. That's awesome. That's yeah. like I love a good free DLC. It's uncommon. Yeah. Yeah, that's um Yeah. I honestly I I had to read that a couple of times just to make sure I I got it right. I think free DLC, uh, especially on a game like this, and adds co op. I love co op. I miss co op games. I growing yeah. up Co-op was a huge, huge thing. Oh, of course. And well, I just it still I, is because there's yeah. there's two of us. So we anything we can play together, we do. Like the new Kirby game that's coming out, Kirby in the Forgotten Lands. Uh, we're both really excited for that, and the fact that's co-op. Like, yes, we're playing that together. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, totally. Um, I will. Yeah. I will point out it's also got the second most comments so far on the playstation mm. blog okay so, return in for an old an old title it's a pretty popular game though it so. is a popular game and, and it's right free it's so. awesome that it's yeah free, free dlc i mean yeah yeah, yeah it, that's, that's, that's how you so breathe new life into a game isn't it you were you were talking before about the user base you need people there on day one and, and then it fades away but if you bring out something like this which is big it's big dlc so it's not just you can play the whole thing co-op now so i mean that's cool but it's not massive in fact that i've added this whole tower of sisyphus is like as substantial content that's how you reinvigorate the market isn't it yeah it is yeah 100 yeah. percent. No, awesome. I, I think it's i think it's pretty cool you can actually leave comments on the iDigital games blog as well so the news oh, cool. when we release these podcasts if you do want to talk about it and you don't want to jump on youtube or anything like that uh just something that i thought yeah i'd mention is you can actually jump onto this particular podcast on the iDigital games news section and chat if you want so i see all the comments come through so i can always uh, i will be on there interacting with, with people if you do jump on just something i mm -hmm. thought i'd add oh. considering i've brought up oh, the comments section a couple of times of the playstation blog it does seem to have the most yeah. likes because you can also like yeah. yeah okay does, there you go it, it does beat out uh ninja turtles just by about 30. Oh. Uh, but it completely eviscerates Ex Exo Primal. So 62 likes yeah. for Exo Primal versus 260. Now, just so um, we all know, the PlayStation yeah. blog isn't significantly popular for social interactions, just as a blanket statement. Oh, just, 260 yeah. is not a huge number. No, but it's it's still interesting to see the what people are gravitating towards. So Returnal, that yeah. adding co-op, free. Yeah, that's pretty good, eh? I was sort of hoping Laura was going to do a sound effect there, but she ruined it. <laughs> that was, I was trying to do a fist bump. Yeah. No. Fisting? No. <laughs> Air no, punch. Uh, not that would be like actually, uh -huh. no, I'm not gonna do it. I was, oh, let's, I was let's about move on to the dio field. <laughs> let's move on. I was Tom's almost going. gonna make this sound no, yeah. yeah. As soon as I said that, it would be more like Tom's like, God. <laughs> shut up, guys. Let's <laughs> move on. Laura and I mentioned earlier that there is a game we are super hyped for near the end of the presentation or the state of play and this is it oh, i believe isn't it oh no. wait no okay well it is for me there we go this Ooh. is a one off mm, yeah sorry I'm not game no okay that's no, good to have differences in opinions no i like trouble. that i like that so much trouble. so for me the three <laughs> yeah i'm sleeping on the couch now nah, i always say that never have yet though 
touch wood. No, every time the same wood as she will be sleeping he wakes on the couch. Up. <laughs> no, he wakes That's up and he goes, oh, I was meant to sleep on the couch last night. Forgot. <laughs> like every couple of days. Yeah. Whoops. Anyway, this is a good thing. Uh, there's no trouble in paradise, guys. It's okay. Uh, no. no. <laughs> so Not today. The three games I'm most excited for from this state of play was, of course, Exoprimal, the dinosaurs, uh, Forspoken, been keen for that for a while, and... Diofield Chronicles. Which it is... does look really cool. Another tactical RPG. Yes. Uh, tactical RPGs are my jam. I am a huge fan of that kind of style. Uh, XCOM style gameplay. This one is definitely uh, going more towards that than like the grid style of something mm-hmm. like Fire Emblem or I'll bring it up again, Triangle Strategy that's just been released. Uh, but I very much... Like, I love RPGs, and I really like this tactical kind of turn-based style of combat. It just just really appeals to me. So, Diefield Chronicles, I am super keen for. Isn't it Square Enix, too? It is Square Enix as well. Yeah, which is another, another thing to bring up. I said they were very busy this year, and yeah. Also, the next game is also Square Enix, Mm -hmm. so they've... They've got a lot on their plate for this year, man. They must have a lot of staff. Yeah, oh, they have a lot of a lot of teams, that's yeah. for sure. hundred percent. Yeah, so that is coming out later this year, I believe. Um, just let me double check that. Awkward silence. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure everything so is coming me, out in 2020. I I don't know how exciting this would be for me as a I do like strategy games and I, I mean this is different, but I do like full on strategy games, but this just doesn't to me so you've got to you do have to enjoy this style of gameplay or the style of combat uh in order in order to enjoy it. because like if if you didn't like something like XCOM or fire emblem or uh, final fantasy tactics or something along those lines then look you probably won't like no no arguments there that's fine i understand it's not for everyone People enjoy different games for different reasons. Uh, but I, yeah, I just do. I do. And RPGs, I mean, who doesn't love a great story? You know, that's that's half the reason I'm not huge on the old Call of Duties and that type of stuff is because I, I really enjoy story and I like I like to get to know characters. And this seems like it's it's gonna it's gonna have a nice one. So yeah, it does look like it's gonna have a cool story. I like the character design. Yes, it does. Yeah, the art style as well looks really nice for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, no, hundred um, percent. It looks kind of like Final Fantasy Tactics. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was pretty. Uh, it's old school now. That's, yeah. That's that's. But the, it looks like it. It's like it gives me those vibes. Like if the, Final Fantasy Tactics was made today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I just like yeah. Well, from the Final Fantasy um, like series that we've seen recently, mm. the character design is familiar. Yes, no, to t- those. Yeah, 100%. and it's tactics, so that's where I get that from. No, no, no. I I agree with you. No, definitely, I understand what you're saying. We are quite oversaturated with uh, tactical RPGs this year or tactic games. There's so many. Yep. The Rabbit, isn't there Mario Rabbids? Yep. One is and coming new out. Mario Rabbids. Um, uh, Marvel's Midnight Suns is going to be a tactical RPG. Um, the aforementioned Triangle Strategy, which I can't push enough because it's freaking awesome. There so was one. There's, there there's... is. I Okay. Now, we we should bring this up and we should talk about this. Uh, because there was a tactical, not so much RPG, but a tactical game. Tactical, though, yeah. That has been delayed indefinitely now. Uh, we're talking about Advanced Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp. 
So it is, it was a, uh, a remake, sorry, Dan, of the Advance Wars games that came out on the Game Boy. Uh, it's not really something that Laura and I were super interested in. Uh, I, I prefer the art style of the original Game Boy Same. games. Same. I thought the old ones looked better. Yeah, I really like, like that art style. Uh, a lot so, of people were excited for it though, but it's 100%. a bit, it's hitting a bit too close to home. So yes, with the uh, current state of the world and the war in Ukraine, Nintendo has taken the move of just, they're not releasing it and it doesn't have a release date anymore, which is totally fair. I think that's the right decision. I think it would be a little bit insensitive to release it at the moment. Uh, the first, the first nation you come across in that game is an obvious parody of the USSR, and the first thing they do is invade. So that's all you really have to know. They've delayed it because of that, and I think that is definitely the right move. There's a we won't get too much into the old. You know, we like to keep this. Uh, podcast is an escape from reality but uh, things like that are inescapable especially for the people over there so yeah yep. that's one tactical rpg that was going to come out there isn't anymore so now we can just plop dio field chronicles there instead we've got the same amount of tactical rpgs mm-hmm. yep and we will have that there instead absolutely no so i'm i'm keen for it I will that this is yeah as I said one two three this is my third pick from from present from the state of play god damn what did you think of Dio Field Dan no nah, no interest for me yeah. nothing I uh, yeah yeah like I said those those first two games that we mentioned are the ones that drew me in more. Mm-hmm which probably will have a little mm-hmm. bit of controversy behind because I reckon Exo Primal is going to get slammed. But I agree. like I said earlier, I like dinosaurs and I don't care what you Looks think. like some fun. Yes. Of fashion. I, think, um, I do think what the what companies are doing now in support of Ukrainians uh, I just thought I'd add in there that PlayStation have also removed sale of anything in Russia. So mm-hmm. yeah, of uh, Nintendo. Th- yeah. Yes, I think that's I think that's pretty big of them. I think that's pretty good. And I think as well, a lot of people are missing the point of this. So we all know I like to go on a rant. So I'm going to go on a quick one. But a lot of people believe the this is penalizing the Russian people when a lot of them aren't in favor of this war, which is, mm-hmm. I believe, true. Mm-hmm. So the idea of this is to push people to have a voice. So they're pushing everyday russians to see that what's happening because they're, they're at the moment there is a significant amount of propaganda that they're getting to say that oh, this is oh. not this is so that it these the media in russia are not allowed to call it an invasion or a war that they, they, they are not allowed to use those words so there's a significant amount of propaganda going on so i think the i'm going to just say western companies just to blanket things which is not the case but it's easier uh removing sale and doing these other bits and pieces from russia is not about it's it's not about penalizing the russian people it's about trying to get them to have a voice against what is essentially a dictator regardless of what anybody wants to think he has removed a significant amount of legislation saying that you know a president has to step down after a certain period of time blah 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 he removed all of that to stay in power for uh, a significantly longer time so i think it's good i think it's good that nintendo also uh, pulled the pin especially 
considering the um, first encounter is quite entertaining. Yes, it is. Uh, it's definitely the right choice to pull out that pull out specific game. Um, yeah, there you go. Dan, Dan's rant about the war in Ukraine. Again, we like to keep this podcast as an escape from reality, but unfortunately, there's many people that can't escape that reality at the moment. Moving on. Yes? No? Yes. Yep. Tactical RPG is done. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cool. War's done. Let's Let's stop being morbid. Let's get back in the video games. Well, there's one left, and I think that they saved one of the best for last. I'm super excited for Valkyrie Elysium to come out in 2022 as well, I'm pretty sure, because I think they all were. Yeah. Uh, no, no, yeah. Not, not all of them. Exo Primal is 2023. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, look, PlayStation have notoriously been bad at closing out these state of plays. They don't really know what to stick there. Uh, I think this was as good a choice as any, to be mm-hmm. honest. You know, uh, Nintendo Directs, there's always that one big announcement at the end, and that's, you know, it's always something good and juicy. Uh, state of players don't always have that. This isn't necessarily that big, juicy one. You know, it's not... It was a bit juicy for me. I like. I reckon it looks friggin' awesome. It's like action-adventure, yes. like, style combat. Yep. And it's got, again, like, a badass female. Mm-hmm. Always goes down well for me. Um, it looks really cool, although there is this like black outline of the character in some places, but not others. But I mean, it hasn't been released yet. Yeah. So maybe they're going to be working on that. Yes. I feel like it's an early build that we've seen. But it looks really cool, in my opinion. No, I think it looks fantastic as well. Uh, I'm always down. I, I assume this is like an action adventure RPG thing. Uh, the Valkyrie series was always that. Uh, so this is like a revival of a, of a series. So yeah, I'm, I'm keen as well. Don't get me wrong. It's just not my top. It's not in my top three. That's, that's, that's all I'm saying. I like tacticals yes, a little bit more. Yeah, you than, do. Uh, well, not, not necessarily more, but just that, that one spoke to me more than this one. Yeah. No, I think I think it's again. I think it's as good a thing to close out with as any. Yeah, I'm gonna get it for sure. So that makes Exo Primal, Ghostwire, For Spoken, and Valkyrie Elysium that I'm definitely gonna get. You can only pick three, mate. You have to have a top three. I what? Who says? Me. <laughs> Why should I listen to you? I don't know. <laughs> Well, I can't pick four. You can't pick four. You can pick four. Oh, God. all right. Fine. I'll put turtles how about, in. Okay. How about well, this? The... I'm, putting, I'm putting my foot down. You can each yeah. only pick Thank one you. for today's episode. What is the only okay. one that you mm. would pick up? Well, I'm going to borrow Dan's copy of Exo Primal when he chooses that one. <laughs> so, thank you. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, I think for this this little uh, exercise here, Laura, we're gonna have to forget that we're we live in the same house and we can probably play each other's game. It, hang on. Let's forget that. Hang, hang on a second. What? Why are you allowed to borrow Dan's game, but I'm not allowed to borrow oh. your game? Well, well, it just, just, it doesn't like make that. sense, does it? How does that make sense? Because this is a, oh, God, okay, dear, all right, I really put my foot in it, didn't I? This isn't a team exercise, though, because we could go out. Like, no, yeah, oh, you, you, you pick one. your game you and then and I'll, I'll get this one. And yeah. then we can all we can all play each other's games later on. For spoken for me. I've been excited other. about it. I've been, <laughs> I've been excited about for spoken for a while now. Uh, that it just keeps looking cooler and cooler. Yeah. Uh, I was I was always going to buy it, so I, yeah I can't I can't pass that up. Yeah, it does look really cool. There was before we before I make my choice. Mm. There was one thing that I was pretty upset that wasn't in this state of play. Yeah, and that I actually haven't heard anything about for ages. Yeah, Breath of this, the Wild uh, too. Uh, I know. Oh, oh yes, always. <laughs> Every day I'm just dis- 
disappointed to not hear something about Breath of the Wild's too. Coming at E3, guys. Come and just be patient. Definitely will be there. Or I'll, just, uh, I'll, I'll, eat, I'll eat a shoe if it's not at E3. Eyebrows. Done. I'll shave my eyebrow if it's not at E3. Done. Go on. All right. So the Harry Potter game. Oh. There's this Harry Potter game that's coming out. It was one of the reasons I wanted a PS5. Hogwarts Legacy, I believe, is the name of it. I think so. It's, it still says it's coming this year, but it yep. wasn't in this presentation, on sadly. A, but honestly, that would definitely be my choice. Yeah. The, the one that's not there. The one that's not there is what I'm choosing. No, I think oh, it's pretty... So I would choose... I would choose for spoken, but mm. Tom's already taken it. So it's it yeah, it's though. very close between. Remember, mm-hmm. you guys aren't yeah. living together. Yeah, not we're together. not. Oh, yeah, we're not yeah. friends in this the, reality. The one that you're excited for the most. I think I am excited, most excited for for spoken. Okay. Yeah. Or Ghostwire, or Valkyrie. So they come a close second for you is what you're saying. Yeah, they come a for very close second. Forspoken wins, but... For spoken, and then comes Ghostwire and then comes Valkyrie Elysium. We weren't allowed three, so I guess it's going to have to be for spoken because it just looks totally rad. It does look really rad. I, I, have you played any of the other Valkyrie games, Lou? No. Well, there you go. I guess this is a good way to get into it as any, is it? Yep. Yeah, nice. Did you say a goodest way? Yeah. The yep. goodest way. The goodest yeah. way. Yeah. Dan? Uh, I think it's going to come as a surprise to everybody, but I think Exo Primal has just edged everything out for me. Mm. Mm. That uh, doesn't surprise me at all. Dan's kind of game. It uh, opened with dinosaurs and nothing beat the dinosaurs for Dan. That's, I didn't, I didn't it's think the it's like I just glazed it. over. As soon as the dinosaurs have, oh yeah, get everything. Yeah. Dinosaurs are everything closest else. to Charizard in this state of play. <laughs> oh, you're nice. so right. Yeah. <laughs> I think this state of play. Going back to what you said about Harry Potter, Laurie, I have. You're not the only one that disappointed that Hogwarts Legacy wasn't there. Uh, there is a. Quite a number of people that are disappointed. It was literally one of the reasons I wanted a PS5. Yep. And yep. I, I've got a PS5 and I still don't have that. Oh, we will eventually. It's okay. Uh, I don't hold think on, that's coming on. this because but we Harry haven't Potter heard about is it. not by any Japanese developers, is it? I don't I don't believe so. Why do you ask? Because I I thought that was their focus. Of For this. this state of play. Oh, yeah, it was maybe, Japanese maybe it was. publishers. I could have completely uh, made that up. <laughs> uh, I'm, a- I'm actually not sure, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean... We also thought it was called the PlayStation. Well, he also thought it was called the PlayStation Presents, so... Yeah, exactly. So, um, no, the publisher is Warner Brothers. Uh, the developer is Avalanche for Hogwarts Legacy. So, no. It still says 2022, it's, but... I'm, 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 I'm not... I wouldn't be holding my breath, everyone, if you're also like Laura and super keen. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm calling it now. It's not coming this year. It's coming out next year. I hope I'm wrong. I, I very, I'm also super keen for that game, but... It yeah. might be like a Christmas... Possibly. Yeah, Christmas if game. It, if it is coming out, then it will be a a big yeah, a release, Christ, a Christmas release. Yeah, that's for sure. No, hundred percent. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Um, it was like leaked that it was that it might have been in this state of play, and then it wasn't. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. that's why people are so disappointed about it. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta. We got teased. You gotta set your expectations low for these things. Um, but like again, as I said at the start. Just because it doesn't have the game that you wanted it to have in there, there is no denying that this was a very good presentation. It know? had the most games that I've actually been excited for from a PlayStation Presents ever, I think. So, yeah, 100%. Um, you know, quite often Sony will do these big 
like deep no, dives. I PlayStation Presents again. You did, yeah. Quite often <laughs> they'll do these big deep dives into like one game. Uh, there was a, like a 20 minute deep dive into Gran Turismo before that came out. And these state of plays, so, Laura's right. They can be a little bit lackluster sometimes. Not this one though. No, no, this one was not this one. Yeah. Again, regardless of if there was a game there for you, it was good. But we think uh, as a team here at some low grade gamers that it, it was good. There was a bunch of really nice games. There's a bunch of stuff we're all looking forward to. A uh, bunch of stuff that Dan is able to pick up despite him not owning a PlayStation. So I think that's, I think that really speaks a lot. There that's is also a lot of for. fantasy games I noticed. Uh, I love you, a fantasy game. I me think. too. Yeah. Yeah. I play games to escape real life. So <laughs> no, I think, I think it's, it's definitely, there is something there for everyone. Yeah. I feel surely. Yep. Mm. There's some nostalgia in there. Yes. With the turtles. With the turtles. Yep. And then there's a whole there's some DLC. Mm-hmm. A whole bunch of new new IPs coming. Dinosaurs. Additions to old ones, like with the Valkyrie, Elysium. So yeah, I think I think they did a really good job. I'm not, yeah. yeah. It was a really good one. Dan, what are your final thoughts on it? Yeah, I thought it was above average. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> above average is that a b plus that's all you can ask for or a minus yeah. yeah like look it wasn't next level fantastic but mm-hmm. i wouldn't expect it to be i liked the fact that it was like 24 minutes something and mm-hmm. i agree you basically just got good information uh some of these yep. can just go on and like the the Grand Turismo one that you mentioned really bored me. I love cars. Yeah. yeah. We didn't cover it here. Yeah, huge car man, but I yeah, I bought the I, game and was still bored by that presentation. Yeah. Thing. It just like, like looks fantastic. Good job, guys. But like, I don't see it for that long. Yeah. Yeah, just you let me play the game. They focused yeah. on the most boring aspects of the game, in my personal opinion. Yeah, I, I just think 20 minutes on any game is just too long. <laughs> yeah. You're probably like, right. I agree. I'm in agreement. There's a, there's a reason game sharp, maybe trailers are usually less than two minutes. Like... Mm. It's meant to grab you. It's not meant to tell you the whole story. It's meant to make you want to engage with that IP, whatever it is, you know, whether, whether it's a movie or a game, TV show, that trailer is not like, don't do a trailer and tell me the whole damn story. Make yeah. me want to see the story or make me want to follow the story. Don't mess around with all this bull. Like, yeah. So I thought it was good. That's where I'm going with it. I thought yeah, it was no. a solid, think... solid B plus. And not uh, much bull regardless... fluffs in this one. <laughs> regardless of the games, even if the games were average, which I, I think they're all pretty good, realistically. Um, even if they were not as good, I still think it was a good form factor in terms of 20 minutes, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, exactly. And as you said, short, sharp. Mm-hmm. This is the game. Mm-hmm. This is gameplay of the game. This is the release date or the release window. Boom, next one. Done. Yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, I, I agree. No, I, I agree with Laura. I hate theatrical trailers. I just don't see the point. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see what the game's like. It's yeah. just like with combination in combination, I, yeah, yeah. Like, maybe a little at the start. Yeah, yeah. I I see their draw, but yeah, I think they're they're a little po- pointless, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, yeah, they just no, don't. They look, don't as far that. as I'm concerned, it's got to be gameplay or a cutscene, like yeah. meshed yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. Not not yeah, just yeah. some yeah. random dude that puts on a wig and starts trying to be evil from. 
Assassin's Creed. I don't think that was one, but I'm just making shit up now. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it, it can't be something like that. I, especially when trailers, I mean, especially when some of the cutscenes are so damn fantastic. Like, mm. some of them are so well put together. Just show that. Show us, us yeah. don't ruin the story though, but just show us a bit of that plus the gameplay. Because for me, story is a massive part of the game. That's why I play it. You know, like yeah. Elder Scrolls at the moment. I've been Googling just random facts about it just because I'm I'm into the lore now. Mm. Yeah, no, I that's part of the reason I love Triangle Strategy so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have mentioned that. If you'd like to know more about this game I keep bringing up, go uh, visit youtube.com forward slash some kind of gaming because uh, we, we did do a review on it. That was yeah. our most recent video. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, I think we're going to leave it there, my friends. We yeah. have very nicely wrapped it up. I just gave us a plug. Dan, give yourself a plug. Head over to iDigital Games. You will find games usually. Uh, much, much cheaper than Steam. So, mm, yes. Oh, there is, uh, if any of these games come to PC, which many of them are, I'm sure you will eventually be able to go find them at iDigital Games. Mm, Again, cheaper than Steam. Laugh at how good's that? Yeah, there is a, there is a lovely collection over there. Uh, even if it's none of these games that you're interested in, uh, definitely, definitely go check it out because, um, Dan does a good job of keeping up to date. There is a lot of stuff that uh, maybe he's interested in more than other people, but <laughs> there is there, nah, there, there, there's, <laughs> there, there's great variety over in iDigital Games. Highly recommend. If you play anything on the PC, go check that out first before you buy it from Steam. Especially yeah. Star Wars. Yeah, that's exactly that's what, what I was thinking. thinking. <laughs> yeah, Dan loves Star Wars. There's so many Star Wars games. If you there. want a Star Wars game, Dan has it. Yeah. I would put money on it. I one hundred, yeah. like literally anything ever. There is like Dan's Dan's got it. Oh, yeah. I did it. I, even, I even made a Star Wars category just to just because I had to. <laughs> Yes. Oh, that's so funny. That's so funny. That. I love that. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. It's been our pleasure as always. Thanks for listening to us, Reblon, for like however long this is. We appreciate it. We really appreciate you coming along and listening and joining us for the ride. And we will hopefully catch you on the next one. We are here like clockwork every week. So we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. Woo.